Listening to AM 1080 KSCO Santa Cruz. It is Wednesday. You know, I get tired of talking about politics. You guys know that. So this morning I'm thinking, oh man, please, God, anything other than politics. And guess what, you guys? Guess what? Guess God answers that prayer. Uh, yes. You said, please, God, and here we are and to talk about God. Here you guys are. <laughs> Brenton are. Powers, our good friend, Brenton Powers, hey. host of Dwell on Truth, you hear every Sunday morning. And Daniel Bodwin, who we haven't seen in a long time. Yes. It's good to have you guys both here, dude. I'm so excited. This it is, is great. It's good to be back. It's great. Yeah, it's been a while for Dan. I just saw you this morning. But yeah, that's right. How long has it been since you've seen Dan? Oh, it's Always. been probably a year or so. Huh? Since I've been on, I think, yeah. or close to that. We saw each other at the music festival that right. we had, True Love Christian Music Festival out in yeah. Aptos. That was went very cool. really good. That was Wasn't cool. that a great experience? It was a great experience, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Great music, good art, lots of free food, fun people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful weather. Everything was safe. No yes, emergencies. Sir. No emergencies, no. Well, I wouldn't expect fights to break out at a place like that anyways. Only if a person not connected with the festival wandered in to try to cause trouble and those kind of things happen. But no, everything went went very well. It was good. I loved it. Do people actually walk in there and try to start a hassle with you guys? Well, and we're talking about this, of course, because in that case, I was helping run the security team out there because mm-hmm. that's my professional background before I was a missionary. Mm-hmm. I haven't done a lot of Christian festivals. <laughs> For other kind of festivals, oh, yeah, there's always people wandering in just to see what they can stir up. So that's not unusual. <laughs> but, yeah, it went, it, went great. it went great. Some people just need something to do, and that something to do has to do with annoying other people. So what can <laughs> I mean? What are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to do, dude? Yep. What are you going to do? It's job security. Well, it's good to see you, Daniel. Yeah, it's good to be here. Brenton, as always, it's nice to have you. I joined you for a podcast today, which was a lot of fun. We get personal. I think you'll see some sides of Dave you haven't seen, Mm -hmm. and uh, including his real last name. He divulged that. Yeah, dude, I can't believe that. I was driving home, and I was thinking, (laughs) hmm, I wonder if that's going to increase the stalkers by a certain percentage. But we didn't give you a real first name. No, thank goodness. (laughs) Nobody has showed up at your house, Brenton? Uh, you showed up. I, I, <laughs> yeah, other other than me, any, anybody I, I unexpected? I don't give up my uh, home address. It's no. I, I check Google every once in a while to make sure no They'll one's like, you, doxing dude. me. Well, hopefully not. But, yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah, not. Yeah. but it's always a possibility, unfortunately, in the day and age that we live in. Always, yeah. dude. Always. I've worried about it. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. It, it's, and, and like you said, nowadays it's crazy, man. It's, there's crazy stuff yeah. going on. I, I've there. got my ring camera out front. I got another security camera out to the side. Mm-hmm. I get notified in my studio if anyone comes on my property. So I suppose that's the risk of living in the world, right? Anything can happen anywhere. You don't have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but it does help to be careful and keep your head on a swivel. Is that the saying? Absolutely. I don't necessarily have a list of questions ready to go, but I did have one general question for you. I was listening to uh, music, you know, Christian music. I I think I told you about this group that I was listening to. Yeah. And it's not just them. There's other people who, who uh, rap, you know, and some of it's some of it's pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. And most of it is not, but there's some of it that, that's really, really good. And I enjoy listening to it. But something I, I hear them say that is part rap, I mean, is part, you know, uh, par for the course in rap, but also flawed thinking is it seems like they're overconfident about their ability to reject the devil. Mm-hmm. They'll say things like, oh, the devil is nothing compared to God, and, and I'll just squash the devil, and he can never get with me because I'm with Jesus and all that. And I'm thinking, I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I'm not religious, but the last thing I would do is say, you know, the devil can't tempt me and blah, 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 and go Uh beating my chest because I would think that the devil can tempt you and is always trying to and will not have horns and a pitchfork. It's going to be something that you wouldn't expect. So how do you guys know that you're not too confident in your ability to be tempted? 
well, or I resist think, temptation? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a fair question, and I think there's kind of two sides to that. And this is kind of one of those weird cultural things that I think people wonder about, the idea of demonic possession, mm-hmm. how that can mess with people and cause them to do things and give them supernatural strength. And so that's actually something the Bible talks about. That can be real. Um, that is something that Christians cannot be affected by demonic possession, because when you trust in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes and lives in you and protects you from that. It actually um, talks about that in Scripture, you know, that, that we're protected in that way. But could the devil either directly, or and, and a lot of people say, well, the devil's doing this, the devil's doing that. The devil is not omniscient. He's not everywhere, but he's got a lot of demons working with him, and they're very old and very smart and very powerful. So the the idea that it has to be Satan every time something goes wrong is, is ridiculous. But can Satan and his minions impact you, tempt you to do something either directly or through the people around you? Absolutely. And should we be wary of that? Yes, absolutely, we should be careful. I mean, all we have to do is turn on the news for a couple of minutes to see that that this world is full of the wiles of the devil and things that he has put there to try to draw us away from paying attention to God and pay attention to politics or news or... Um, entertainment or so many other things. I mean, and and yeah, Satan uses those things in an indirect way to tempt us as well. So yeah, it's something we should definitely be aware of. What do you think, Brenton? Yeah, I think in the question, the word overconfidence is a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want to, you know, to what degree should we have confidence that we have victory over the devil? I think it's to the degree that our confidence is in the Lord and not in our own flesh. Because we don't battle spiritual things in our own fleshly strength. That That's a losing battle. There was a story, and this is kind of a funny story, in the, the book of Acts, mm-hmm. where Paul was casting out demons. I know this one. And so there were people that were like, hey, we could do the same thing. We'll just use the same phrase. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, who Paul preaches, come out of him. The seven sons of Sceva tried to do an exorcism. And uh, the demon answered back, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? And he overpowered all seven men, and they fled from the house naked and bleeding. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. That must have looked terrible. So the point is you need to really know the Lord and walk in his authority, not in your own authority or in just words. It's not magic words that gives it's us power over demons. It's the fact that greater is he who is in us, that is the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. than he who is in the world. Jesus says, fear not for I have overcome the world. Yeah, there's another passage that comes to mind, too, and it's, uh, it talks about an evil spirit going out of a man. So somehow this man exercised this demon, and it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. And then he says, well, I'll return back to the home where I was in before. And he comes back to this home, this speaking of the person, and he finds it swept clean and put in order. So he brings in seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they go in and live there. So it's another reminder that, that we need one who is going to stand as that guard in our souls, and that is the Holy Spirit, to keep that from happening. Happening. So, we, we, yeah, we should not take it lightly in any respect. We need yeah. to take the attacks of the enemy seriously. There's a reason why there are so many passages of Scripture where it talks, it, it uses, you know, military terms. It talks about us putting on God's armor to protect us. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's, it's a battle. It's there's, a real battle. Yep. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, it says. And speaking of the Word of God, I brought some gifts tonight. Oh, um, wow. I invested in... Nine copies of, it's called the Good News New Testament, Mm -hmm. Good News Translation, which I think for someone who's never read the Bible or hasn't been exposed to Christian culture, it's easy to understand. So if you've never read the Bible, feel free to come by and take one. Take one. Each (laughs) household, not one for everyone in your family. Just (laughs) one per household, please. Right. 218-5726-KSEODave at gmail.com. In your experience, what has been the big? What are the biggest temptations that, that steer people away? That, that have led people away from, like that keeps people from becoming yeah, Christians. Not, not necessarily or, about you, but in your personal yeah. journey, you've seen people kind of get close to God and fall away. Do you know yeah. what temptations are at the top of the list that cause people to fall away? Um, I'd be interested to know what everyone thinks on this question. 
I think pride is the first thing that yes, comes to mind. Absolutely. The same root of that idea of, oh, I have power to, I'm a demon slayer. You want to think higher of yourself than you ought. Mm-hmm. For men, at least, I think that's one of the more common ones. We don't want to humble ourselves and admit there's a higher authority than us. Of those that are not Christians, seems like the root issue is they just don't want to yield. They want to be in charge of their lives. They want to be in charge of their own morals, and they don't want to answer to anybody. Yeah, and that's, I, th- I would argue, how sin came into the world. That's what caused Satan to fall, because, you know, worshiping ah. God wasn't enough. He wanted pride. He wanted the throne for himself. And of course, he lost. And then Adam and Eve, what did he tempt them with? With pride, you know, or Cain and Abel, yeah. you know, Cain and Abel, the first two children of Adam and Eve. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Cain's was not. And he had that bitterness, you know, from losing face. That's where the first murder came from. Yeah. I mean, there's it, we see it all through. Or the or uh, Nebuchadnezzar, I think it was, of Babylon, who, yeah. you know, uh, was called to repentance. And he was basically saying, look at this amazing kingdom. Look at this world. Everything that I made with that my own I hands. Made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he was the one that God made him live as an animal for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Billy Graham also gave this real memorable way of thinking of three categories of temptation. They all start with G. Pride appeals to your desire for glory. Glory is the first one. You want to be lifted up. You want to be honored by people. That could be a temptation to be a false teacher or to live in the wrong way. Second G is gold, the money. If you're greedy for stuff, um, that can lead to a lot of temptation. Mm -hmm. Third G, probably guess, it's the girls. Yeah, right? I would have guessed that would be somewhere up on the list. <laughs> the downfall of many men, even men in ministry. And so those are the three areas, sexual sin, uh, sins of the ego, and sins of greed. Very yeah. common temptation. We, and we all struggle with temptation. Mm-hmm. I want to make a distinction, though. It's not a sin to be tempted. Everyone is tempted. Yes. But it becomes a sin when you indulge in the temptation. When you give in to it, you succumb to that temptation. Yeah. And the strength to overcome, we can't overcome by our own flesh. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit to give us victory in the Spirit. Yeah. I just got a text here, and uh, you guys can both answer this. It says, can I still listen to metal music and watch horror movies and just in general like darker stuff and still call myself a man of God? Horror movies, I would have to say no. I mean, creepy movies, suspenseful movies, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, theoretically, yes. You know, blood and gore and chopping heads off and tearing arms out of sockets and the kind of stuff, you know, the Freddy Krueger stuff, which, mm-hmm. I mean, I watched that when I was a kid. I'm not proud of that now, but I did. Um, those, I think, dishonor God in the way that they handle things. Um, metal music, oh my goodness, one of my, probably my favorite band right now is is Skillet, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with them, it's it's, it's hard Christian rock and mm-hmm. and it's it's amazing stuff. And, and they have and, and not all of their music is about Jesus this and Jesus that, but it's positive themes and, and real themes, and it's great to listen to. So stylistic, that's fine. Um, what was the other the other topic that he Horror, talked about? metal. And uh, so, just general darker stuff, I think, was it. A- uh, darker stuff, you'd have to be more specific. If you're interested in, like, I don't know, true crime podcasts or something like that, provided it doesn't become an idol, that's the world we live in, and it's... And I, I think it's okay to listen to that stuff. So much of it depends on, some of it depends on the person because different people are going to be tempted and affected in different ways by different things. So yeah. it's, yeah. God is the judge. Yes. You know, so can someone still be a, a man of God and be in sin? That is possible for that is people to be in sin. Should they watch horror? And we got to also leave room for, as Christians, there's also matters of conviction where someone may not feel convicted that they need to stop watching all horror films, anything as categorized as horror. I generally try to avoid, mm-hmm. yeah, me too. but I like The Quiet Place and The Quiet Place too. Technically, that's, that's in the horror category. Not suspense. That's how it was uh, huh, categorized. So it depends how you categorize it. Darker stuff? Well, the Bible picks up this theme of light versus darkness. Are we talking demonic things? Are we talking, like, rather than asking, how close can I get to the darkness? Mm -hmm. I think a better question is, how close can I get to the light? How much can I walk in the light? 
And we're called children of light. We're called to be the light of the world and to not walk in darkness or in hidden sin. So it's always better to walk in the light. I wouldn't advise I anyone walk in what they know to be spiritually dark, you know? That's true. And particularly, I mean, we should be in the Word. We should be in prayer. If somebody is in Christ, then the Spirit of God is going to speak with them and convict their spirit about these things. When it really becomes a problem is the Spirit is convicting me. I know this is wrong, or at least it's wrong for my soul and my personality, and I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. That's when there's a real problem. Outside of that, yeah, there are some there are some gray areas. I've been teaching about these gray areas um, as I go through the Book of Romans on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. So if you want to know more about that, it's Romans chapter fourteen. There are questions that the Bible doesn't answer for us. Yeah, there there were no directly. movies. Yeah, there were no movies back then. And so how we wrestle with these modern questions is it's a matter of personal. Not opinion, but conviction, I would say. Where is your confidence that this is God's will for your life? It's better if there's any concern for your own life, if this is somebody's real question, why not just err on the side of walking in the light? Not that you're going to lose your salvation if you watch that movie, but maybe it'd be better for you. Maybe you'd grow more. Maybe you'd be a healthier person if you didn't. Yeah, I think think the way that you put it earlier, if your thought process is— I'm going to do as much as I can get away with, <laughs> you know, you know, without going to hell or something. It's like, let me push the limits as, as far as I can, then that's a problem. Our desire should be to glorify and honor yeah. God in everything. So if you come to the conviction, you know, through prayer and through the scriptural, the wisdom of the godly men around you, that I can do this without compromising my faith— you know, and you're doing that in in good conscience, then okay. Yeah. You know, I don't know the details of this person's life, but I would be careful. I agree with you. There is a slippery slope argument that can be made when it comes to watching demonic films or listening to demonic music. Just because you like the style of the music, that could be the bait, but the hook that you're not anticipating could lead you into some really demonic stuff. Two one eight five seven two six. That's the text line. Nick in Royal Oaks, you're in the air. Thank you. You know, I like Christian music because they play the specter of everything, and basically um, it's without alcohol and drugs, and it'll give you the spirit of going that way. That is true. I saw um, Skill It Over with a Luis Palau event in Sacramento. Oh, wow. It was free. I was kind of shocked. It was all clean and went on. They're on the harder rock side, but they're really good. Yeah, she's running around like Kiss. I was, whoa, I was just looking at everybody. And I said, hey, all right, we're all neat. And so um, I missed your event. Really, what put it off of my schedule was thinking of parking. I'm probably the guy that would want a shuttle from the church. Yeah, a lot of people needed that shuttle. Uh, yeah. You know, anything in the script, I've been to Spirit West Coast maybe three times. Mm. Do you know about that? This Was uh, was this a long time ago? Decade. They, they left. Laguna Seca. I think I recognize the reference. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Nick. Yep. Now we're going to go out with some music from the Itzels. Who are the Itzels? The Itzels are actually a family band from the East Coast. The uh, older son is actually part of our ministry, Open Air Campaigners, and we have partnered with them. They do street evangelism like we do, so they're personal friends. Great folks. Check out their music. If you have any questions, by the way, for Brenton or Daniel, you can get a hold of us here. Brenton is host of Dwell on Truth, which airs every Sunday. And Brenton, it's turning into a tradition at my house, for me at least, on Sunday morning, making breakfast or cleaning the house or whatever and turning on your show. Really? I I (laughs) thoroughly enjoy your show, dude. I think it's probably one of the better shows that we have on the station. I think it's a great show. I appreciate that. You never know who's listening or how many people. It's it's a thing I do by faith. I believe this is something God's wired me for. Mm -hmm. It's in my blood. My grandfather and his brothers Mm -hmm. started uh, a Christian radio station in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. 
And I just, I've been ministered to so much by people that have shared the gospel on the radio and taught the Bible. And that's why I'm at Calvary Chapel, because the Calvary Chapel has invested a lot into radio ministry. Mm-hmm. I took a radio ministry class in Bible college, and now I'm, I'm happy to fulfill that mission. This is part of what I'm called to do. Amen. What a so, blessing. Yeah, I, put, I try to do it with passion and quality and professionalism. And I'm a sound guy, too, so I better sound good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the the uh, I like to start the day off with a positive message, yeah. um, and to me, I think that your show is just it's just a great way to start the day. You know, there was another show on here where the guy would talk about the end of the world coming, and man, that you listen to that show, you want to throw yourself off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> well, but we, your show is much better. It's a much more positive thing. I love it, um, and I encourage people to check it out. I always try to give good news because there's enough bad news in this world. Oh yes, that there is. we really need good news. And the good news that I that I think is the best news of all is maybe not even new. It's the same news that uh, for two thousand years the church has been boldly, confidently proclaiming that there is life after death. I mean that is good news. I just went to a memorial last Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's a stark reminder that people need hope. They need to know what we need to do to get into heaven and what must I do and is there a way that we can know God? Is there any hope for me? And I want to say, yes, there is hope for you. It's found in Jesus Christ, and He can change your life and give you a new life. So in that sense, it is good news, because people keep getting saved mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and following the Lord and growing, and um, it's fresh every time I share it. It doesn't come out the same way twice. Amen. What are you holding in your hand there, buddy? This is the good news New Testament. Is that what's out there on the... On the uh... Yeah. On the doorstep? We're giving away these free New Testaments. Go ahead and come by and get one. It's turquoise. It says good news on the cover. And I was just looking up a scripture I want to share. Okay. Why do I focus on the good news? Um, Not just because I don't like bad news, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but because the Bible itself tells us don't get discouraged, don't get distracted, don't be led astray. We're talking about victory over the devil, how not to fall prey to his lies. One way is just by paying attention to the truth. So I have a men's Bible study Tuesday nights. Okay. We were studying this last night, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm just going to read it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It says, Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from death, descendant from David, as taught in the good news I preach. Because I preach the good news, I suffer, and I am even chained like a criminal. But the Word of God is not chained. And so I endure everything for the sake of God's chosen people, in order that they too may obtain salvation that comes through Christ Jesus and brings eternal glory. This is a true saying. Remind your people of this and give them a solemn warning in God's presence not to fight over words. It does no good, but only ruins the people who listen. Do your best to win full approval in God's sight as a worker who is not ashamed of his work, one who correctly teaches the message of God's truth. Keep away from profane and foolish discussions, which only drive people farther away from God. So we have to choose. What are we going to pay attention to? Mm. I choose God's Word. Wins every time. Uh, Let's get out to the phone lines and see if we have these fixed. Paul, we'll get to you, but Sarah was on first. uh, Okay, go for it. Okay. It was the question about um, what drives people away from Christianity. It's probably the the hypocriticalness. Uh, the closed-mindedness, the mainly the closed-mindedness, they contradict themselves a lot. How so? Oh, just, well, I mean, like, they've already proven, like, if there was ever such thing as Adam and Eve, they would have had to have been black. Because white is a genetic screw-up. Look at every species on this planet. There's going to be a, an albino. Because you have to have color to have a lack of color. Yeah, they weren't white, and, you know, and no, and okay. no informed Christian would claim that. There's you genetic can, variability uh, that were likely in Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were absolutely not white, you were correct, but they were absolutely yeah, and, not black either because um, in order for heard. all of the colors that we have in different ethnic groups to come about, there had to be genetic variability from very light to very dark. So Adam and Eve, probably middle brown, you know, okay. somewhere middle brown. What about the whole fact that I don't see it possible that Adam came first due to the fact that everything starts out as female? Well, you need female and male to reproduce, yeah, but, so I'm not but, sure but, but what, where you got when that they, idea when from. It, when everything starts out, they start out as female. It's the, the lack of a hormone or the 
production of a hormone, I can't remember which one, is what makes it turn to male. Or with reptiles, it's temperature. Uh You'd have to show us the science on that. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's correct. I don't. Males I have no, well, I, the, the I chromosomes and the DNA is all in there. I didn't start out as a female and become male. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we did. All right. Yeah, well, thanks did. for your call. Okay. Right. Bye bye. I do think. Thank you for I, the call, sir. I do think it's not a good reason to reject Christianity because Christians have failed to represent Christ accurately. Mm. Like, you shouldn't reject Christ because some people claiming to be followers of him act hypocritically. Right. Yeah, you I should reject agree. hypocrisy, which is what I did. Yeah. If somebody has a an idea that somehow white people are superior, or any ethnic group is superior from other ones, that's certainly something that's contrary to Scripture. There is equality and unity. There is only one race. There is the human race. There are different ethnic groups that have been isolated, so certain ethnic characteristics have been emphasized. You know, white, lighter-skinned people in Europe or darker-skinned people in Africa or people in the Middle East or somewhere in between. Or You get the idea. There is there is no superiority of one ethnic group. And do I remember correctly, or am I right in uh, remembering, is this a, a correct memory, that Adam was first? Correct. And then God created created a woman for him. Correct they, from him. Yeah, on the same day. Uh, okay. But yes, Adam and Eve. Adam was created first. Let's see what Paul has to say. Paul, thank you for hanging in there. You're in the air. Hello, hello, Dave. I had been talking to some friends, and uh, these folks, I guess, are what Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, and yes. they they indicated that apparently something common in the discussion of religion is. Uh, life after death, and based on their yeah. understanding is that there isn't, and that they said, well, if you look in the Bible, there's nothing that says that, and so I was somewhat intrigued by that. Everyone's got their uh, interpretation of what is and what isn't, so I kind of wanted to hear your basis that would refute what they said to me. Yeah. Where in the Bible does it say that when you die, you're going to heaven, other than the fact that when you're dead, you're dead. Here's a verse I quote hundreds of times every weekend, because I do outreach, and this is what Jesus himself said right before raising Lazarus from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. John 11, 25. John eleven twenty five Hebrews nine I believe says it's appointed for a man to die once and after this the judgment, and so we can read about the judgment the last couple of chapters of the Bible Revelation chapter twenty verse five and six says the rest of the dead will not come to life until the thousand years were ended this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they will be priests of god and of christ and they will reign with him a thousand years and so there is life after death jesus proved it by rising from the dead and i'll let dan uh, continue from there yeah i would agree and uh revelation is huge that is very precise about what the, yeah, at least the, our final state will be. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of places we could go in Scripture that, that talks about that. For instance, we have the thief on the cross. When Jesus was crucified, there were two thieves that were crucified with him, one on each side. One chose to continue mocking him, um, even though he was about to die. The other one realized that there was something special about Jesus and said, well, why are you mocking him? Well, we're getting what our deeds deserved. He's done no wrong. And he turned to Jesus and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Or I think of a, the other story of the rich man and Lazarus, where this rich man who was a, um, sinful is is in a hellfire, being yeah. tormented. Luke 16. And, yeah, Luke 16. Yeah. The point I'm trying to understand is, is that what they've expressed to me I'm assuming you have heard before, yes. and from the specific group. Yes. yes, we've talked a lot about the Jehovah's Witnesses. They are a cult, in our view, and they do deny that non-believers go on forever. They believe in something called um, Annihilation. annihilationism, where you just cease to exist. Yeah, yeah. But their hope is that they're going to be good enough to make it into the eternal paradise on earth. 
Um, so they, if they say there is no life after death, they're being disingenuous, yeah. but because they at least hope for themselves to get it. And I know that's a strong word to say they're a cult, but yes. uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is that I'll be talking to them, and I just wanted to get something to feed back to them because obviously, uh, similar to all the other religious institutions, they're mm-hmm. somewhat established, and yeah. I guess established based in the fact that. Certain groups can consider them cults, I guess. But yeah. then again, certain people think I'm an idiot. So I, I really <laughs> yeah. it. no. It's a very thank you for the call, Paul. Yeah, it's good that you're looking for scripture. I hear Absolutely. you looking for the reference and looking it up. Here's one that I like to give, and Dan has his own approach how to reach out to mm-hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses. I like to appeal, as I've already done on this show, to the to the desire for hope. Mm-hmm. And um, when it talks about heaven, which Jehovah's Witnesses don't even believe that they're going to go to heaven. They think only the 144,000 will make it there. But Paul says this in Colossians chapter 1. Sorry, I use this lovely program to find things. I'd recommend eSword. Oh, you do? Mm. Somebody gave me that program or recommended it to me, and I have it in my computer. Good good program. It's really good. The 144,000, Daniel, does that have something to do with 12 times 12? Yes, What's it that does. The 144,000 is actually mentioned in the book of Revelation. And, and if you read it, and I would encourage people, if they've talked to Jehovah's Witnesses about this, to read the text for themselves. That's mm-hmm. where you got to start. Yeah. Because the, the Jehovah's Witnesses and a lot of cults, they take the viewpoints, uh, the explanations of their leaders or their organization, and they just impose that on the text when the text doesn't say that. The text in Revelation does talk about a group from the 12 tribes of Israel, specifically, who will be evangelists in the last day. And that's where the 144,000 comes from, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not talking about who's going to end up in heaven. It's talking about those who will be converted from the Jewish state and will go out into the world to share the gospel. So to come to that conclusion, they have to go wildly out of context. And that's the problem. When one of the marks of a cult is, rather than going to the text and pulling their ideas, their truth out of the text, which is called exegesis, it's a theological term, Mm -hmm. but it means to pull out of, they take the ideas that they want to be true and read them into the text and try to justify them. That's called eisegesis. So I found the verse that I was looking for. This is what I, with total love, when I talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, Mm -hmm. because I have compassion for them, I just will read this and ask them what they think of it. Colossians 1, verse 3 to 5 says, We always thank God when we pray for you. I'll skip to verse 5. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel. So I'll ask them, like Paul says to the Colossian church, there's hope for you in heaven, and I thank God that you have it. You have assurance you're going to heaven. Isn't that what that means? And I'll say, who's Paul saying is going to heaven? Is it not the Colossian church? It would have to include the Colossians, if Paul says, you have hope in heaven. Jesus talked about, don't store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust can steal, but store up your treasures in heaven. Paul talked about, yeah, there's so many verses. All you got to do in eSword is do this little search button. It looks like uh, binoculars. Mm -hmm. And you search for any word you want to know what the Bible says about it, boom, there it is on the computer and on phones. I personally recommend you do this. This is the number one way that I've developed my own thinking in terms of quick answers to these questions, because I've studied these things by often doing word studies in the Bible. What does the Bible say about X? All right, sounds good. Also, text your questions in. That's 218-5726. As we your people turn and pray and seek your face, we must go. We must go. KSEO Dave at gmail.com. We're hanging out today with Brenton Powers and Daniel Bodwin, two good friends of the show here. Good to see you guys in studio again. And uh, Brenton brought some books that he's given out for free. Tell us one more time what these books are, Brenton, and where they are. Well, I brought nine New Testaments. They're called Good News Translation, which is, I found out, it's the translation that Dave read through the whole entire Mm -hmm. Bible in. Mm -hmm. 
So it's very readable, and from what I've seen, very accurate. Mm-hmm. Someone already took one during the last hour, so there's good. seven more out there. Go ahead and take one per household. Yeah, I, I like the Good News Bible because it was very easy to understand. It was a gift, as a matter of mm-hmm. fact, from someone who's not religious. Weird. Yeah. They, they had it and they said, here, you know, I read this when I was younger. I don't know when they had it, but they said, here, take it and see what you could do with it. Very cool. It was fantastic. And then you inspired me to actually read it, which was, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think you were in Exodus when I met you. So you had started without oh, had me. I? You had already started. Oh, good. And I, I, I recall... Well, take it back. Yeah, I recall you had even brought it up on the air that you were starting to read it. Mm. And some of your atheist co-hosts were trying to talk you out of it or yeah. tell you not yeah, to... I was surprised. Don't come to Jesus on the air, Dave. This is a yeah. news... <laughs> News show. It shouldn't be about that. Yeah. Yep. It, it's, it's surprising it, how many people just don't like that. I don't know what's up with that. Well, Satan yeah. doesn't want people to believe in Jesus. No, he he no. wants to drag as many people with him into the pool as he can, or into hell as he yeah. can. We should get to these phone calls, you guys, because they are stacked up, and we want to get to them as fast as we can. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right. Alan is calling from Scotts Valley. You're in the air, Alan. Hi there. Um, I just have a question. Uh, one of my relatives, they were strong in the church and stuff and then they moved away and then they had some hard times and now they said that they don't believe in god and the bible and Mm -hmm. they said that now they're now an atheist so i just wondered if i'm trying to rebuild that uh bridge between god and and them and i'm just wondering do you have any ideas of how i could go about that i would just try to do it in a conversational way and ask them why did you go away why do you call yourself an atheist now? Yeah. Is there anything, you know, maybe even asking, can I pray for you? Or I've heard that I've yeah. heard someone ask the question, do you miss him? For those people who... You miss God. Do you miss God? Yeah. You don't want to have a major intellectual battle with them, but you do want to let yeah. them know you care about them and uh, that you're open to conversation about it if yeah. they are open. The one thing I'm trying to do is uh, just... Tell them that I love them, and you know that's all I can really do. And, and they said that they've done a lot of research on the Bible and stuff, and they they they're just not they just change like a 180 from where they were, and then to all of a sudden within the last six months or so, they just kind of went to the other way. Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of possibilities. There there is the possibility that maybe there is a sin or sins that they're struggling with. And they Uh have a greater desire to hold on to that sin than to hold on to Jesus. And that could be, and I don't know, I don't, I know nothing about this person, obviously. Yeah. Um, And, and sometimes those, those desires can cause a person to try to find reasons to push the knowledge of God aside. It, It reminds me of an interesting story, doing outreach in downtown Monterey a number of years ago. And I had a guy come up to me, young man, who had basically the same story. Oh, yeah, I used to be a Christian, and I did this and that, and I used to teach Sunday school. But then I studied this thing, and I studied that thing, and and I'm just not sure that I believe any of this anymore. And it was weird, because I... I, I had a, I got a word from God, and I don't say that very often. <laughs> and I yeah, didn't I've never hear, heard you say that before. I didn't hear like an audible voice or something, but God made it very clear in my spirit what I needed to say to this young man. I want to say kid, he was in his mid-twenties, and I said, no, you don't doubt the existence of God, you know God exists, and you're running from him. And he just tried to come back and came with like some excuses, tried to keep the arguments going, and after a couple of minutes, he just hung his head and nodded. He knew I was was right, and by the end of that conversation, we were laying hands on him, him and praying for him, and he was weeping, just falling apart there on the street and and he told us you know thank you for this so this was a unique experience for me in the way that god works um Mm -hmm. but in this case god was clear on what the problem was and how i was to address it i don't know that he'll do this in your situation but know that it may be something that is keeping him from wanting to believe in god it's not that he doesn't have reason to believe it's that he's trying to push yeah. those reasons down so he can continue to live in his sin and i think we've all been at least close to that at different times so yeah. if it was me i would be praying to God to give you clarity, and maybe even supernatural clarity, on how you can speak to Him. Yeah. Uh, we've been praying, like, almost every day for—it's yeah. a personal relative, so 
That's yeah. good. Uh, it's just that they've done more. They said, well, I've researched, just like you were saying, they researched this, researched that. And they, and they said, I prayed and prayed and God hasn't answered me. So they just kind of gave up. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, don't give up praying because God answers prayer. I've prayed for my stepdad for close to 30 years before he went from being an atheist to a theist. He's still not a Christian yet. And he said to me just last year, I knew that there was a God. It was just inconvenient to acknowledge him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and everyone knows there is a God. I wasn't really an atheist. And what, what made him open to acknowledge that truth is just the prevalence of evil. And there's been other people in, yeah. in pop culture, too, acknowledging if there is such a thing as true evil, there must be true good. People are going the other way, too. You don't often hear those stories, but it, it's happening to the extent that people are open to the truth. And sometimes sin, it makes you not open to the truth, Yeah, sadly. Thank you for the call, Alan. Yeah, just for Alan, I know he's off the phone right now, but Alan, if you think this relative of yours, is, if he's local, or even if he's not, but particularly if he's local and he's willing to talk, have him go to my website, yoursoulmatters.org, and send a contact to me, send an email in the contact page. I would be happy to call him or meet with him personally if he has real questions he can't get by, I would be happy to help him answer those questions. That is such an awesome attitude for people. Uh, that's one of the things I admire about both of you guys and people who, because there's more people like you who, oh, yeah. who want to spread the word. I think that is awesome, dude. I mean, what's Thank in it you. for you? I mean, you're, you're not asking them to pay you, but you're not selling, you're not, no. you're not profiting from no. it. So what, what, why are you doing that? That's it's why, for me why? it's simple. God saved my soul. I deserve hell and I get to go to heaven and I want to spend the rest of my life saying thank you. And this is one way I can do that is by glorifying him by caring for lost souls like this young man. How could I do less? I mean, one soul is worth more than every minute of my time, every penny in my bank account and every drop of blood in my veins. That's what a soul is worth. Very how, cool, dude. How can I not? That's, that's awesome. Not? Uh, let's get out to the phone lines. Bill in Live Oak, you're in the air. Uh, yeah, I got a question for your guests. I'm pretty much a non-believer, but I got a friend who's very intelligent, very well educated. And he's a true believer, but he's also an anti-Semite. Uh, he despises Jews, and and I try to tell him that Jesus was a Jew, and he disputes that. Uh, he says that Jesus was a Palestinian. And uh, my understanding of it is, okay, I've got a Bible in, open in front of me, and you made a reference to the 12 tribes of Israel. Is that right? Yes, uh, sir. Was that in Isaiah? Is that right? Well, the 12 uh, tribes of Israel are throughout the Bible. We were talking specifically okay, about okay, the mention okay, in the Revelation. Okay, throughout the Bible, that, yes. throughout both Bibles, the New and Old Testament, both? yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, okay. Jesus, the word Jew. Oh, okay, now, okay, now back up. I, I'm trying to resolve this between me and him. It's been going on for yeah. 40 years. Um, well, I would just take him Israel, to the Bible. Does that mean does Romans that one mean, three? He's got he's got the Bible. He's got several of them. He reads them all the time. Okay. Uh, now, uh, when you say twelve tribes of Israel, now were they Jews or were they? Palestinians. The, the the Jews were the word Jew comes from the word Judah, which was one of the twelve tribes of Israel. But for shorthand, all of the twelve tribes of Israel is called Israel or Jews um, in the Bible. So yeah. Jesus was a descendant of the line of Judah. So you couldn't get more Jewish than Jesus. Yeah, well, if I remember well, correctly, what, that, the word that's what I thought. But yeah. okay, he is absolutely uh, in in trenches on this subject. Uh, now, the, when they're uh, like the the modern day Islams were were descended from uh, Isaiah or something like that. Uh, there were two brothers. Was it Jacob and Esau? Where Islam came from? It started with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a promise to Abraham 
that that he would expand his family, that they would be like the the sand of the sea, um, that he would bless the whole world through his family. So there was Abraham, and then his son Isaac, and then his son Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And the 12 tribes of Israel were from the 12 sons of Jacob. So that's where the tribes of Israel came from. And and, and, and those are Jews. Those are modern-day Jews, that's yeah, correct? The modern-day Jews. Um, at least the ethnic Jews, because there's religious Jews. Ethnic, there are people right, that are not right. ethnically Jewish that still follow right, the Jewish exactly, faith. Exactly, so, exactly. so yeah, ethnic Jews, you know, originally came from these twelve tribes that were exiled to Egypt, and then we have the Book of Exodus where Moses led them out of the land of Egypt and through the desert for forty years, and then into the Promised Land and and what is now Jerusalem, what what is now the nation of Israel and the areas around it. So yeah, that's that's where the Jewish nation came from. And to make a long story short, Jesus and his disciples were absolutely Jewish. There's yeah. no question about that. But they but Islam they change the they change the history. They, yeah, instead of uh, the biblical record that says that Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, yeah. they turn it into Ishmael. Ishmael, thank and you. That was so yes. God, God gave the chosen line in the Bible, but they, they deny the Bible. They think it's been corrupted, although Islam came many centuries after Christianity. Yes, yes. about 600 years. So, yeah, they think it comes from Ishmael. Thank you for the call, Bill. Ron is up next, Anthony, and then the troll. Let's see what Ron has to say. You're in the air. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call, Dave. Yeah, as far as the uh, the whole argument between Jesus not being a Jew, but if you look at those 12 tribes, yes, your guess is correct that Judah is representative of Jews, but the other 10 tribes that went to the north, they were mm-hmm. called the House of Israel. They had a different destiny. They were given different promises. The House of Judah, however had a different prophecy ahead for them, and even yeah. the ones that came from Babylon. Anyway, I, Yeah, I it's, eth- on, it's yeah. ethnically mixed, there's no doubt about that, and yes, we understand the, the breaking between the nation of Judah, which followed David and the descendants of David um, after Solomon and his son, and the other ten tribes who were mixed with other nations, and, and the Samaritans came out of that, And but, but regardless, and frankly, that doesn't bother me. You know, I still think yeah, God has a plan for the Jewish Nason. But it doesn't represent the other ten tribes. You ask a That's rabbi fine. and look in the dictionary what a Jew is, and it never represents those other ten tribes. Those other ten tribes went north into Europe, I understand over that. into America, and you can follow their path years ago. Okay. What I, does that change about how we should respond to the nation of Israel, or what who we should call Jew and who we should not call Jew? See, I'm. I'm. Talk, I was talking about the time of of Jesus, and was were Jesus and his disciples Jewish? You could make the argument that they came from the from the the clan of Judah. Fine, but I, I'm just not sure where your point addresses anything we were discussing. Well, what it would address is how we treat Christian Zionism and all that, where the Jews can do no wrong in Israel, and we got to support Israel when it's people that have rejected God. I don't care if they claim Yahweh, they reject Jesus as our salvation. There's no other way to the Father except through Him. Absolutely, that is the case. But we were talking about a specific question, not how we should treat the nation of Israel, and it seems like you're kind of leaning toward the political, should we support Israel or not, and that's really not what we were discussing. If it comes down to that and the political situation in the Middle East right now, I will leave it at... I don't want any more people from Israel to die. I don't want any more people from Palestine to die. I want there to be peace there, and I want them all to trust in Jesus Christ, because you're right. That is the only way that we can have peace with God and know that we'll be in heaven one day. So on that, we can agree. Thank you for the call, Ron. Anthony in Watsonville, you're in the air. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, Yeah, good, good. Uh, So I heard a very interesting story uh, that my brother told me. Uh, it was about uh, I believe it I believe it's Isaac Newton right that believed in the the evolution right Isaac was it Isaac Newton about Dar- gravity I, you know what Darwin Darwin yeah Darwin yeah, Darwin, I, I Darwin, yeah. Darwin. Newton was yeah, way yeah. before yeah, Darwin, the modern theory of evolution right yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah. So it was Darwin, and uh, he told me that I guess you know throughout his life he didn't believe in God. He just you know he believed in evolution and stuff. But then he he was describing how on his deathbed he was begging for forgiveness. You know what I mean? So when I heard that, like when he shared that story with me, I just I, I got a little emotional because mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you know because here you have this man that believed in evolution all his life, 
and as about you know he, he's trying to save a soul you know and so and so he's begging for forgiveness you know but uh, uh, i'm not sure if it's true or not but but uh, true or not it's still pretty powerful you know what i mean it's a cool idea i i from the evidence that i've heard and i don't have anything in front of me i don't think that there's good evidence that he did repent on his deathbed, but I hope he mm-hmm. did. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. really hope he did. I, yeah, you know, I would never yeah, want hell for yeah. anyone. So I hope I hope that yeah. the story is true, but I, I'm not really confident that it's true. But it's a, it is you're right. It is a cool story yeah, it's, and it's a yeah. powerful thing to yeah. think about God changing somebody so radically at the last minute. And we have yeah. a God that can do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's an article right, thank you, on thank Sno- you, Anthony. on Snopes, Charles, uh, whether or not Charles Darwin professed belief in God and recanted the theory of evolution mm-hmm. on his deathbed, and there were some people that proclaimed after his death that he uh, had converted to Christianity on his deathbed, and there's similar stories, but mm-hmm. there's a whole article on there. Whether whether it's true or not, I, I, I hope that everybody out there, yeah, yeah, before yeah. they die... They consider the claims of Christ, and whether you believe in evolution or not, that's not the, what saves you. Yeah. What saves you is believing in the true Jesus Christ, not a Palestinian, yes. <laughs> not a descendant of Ishmael, mm. but the one who was prophesied over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament, Jesus fulfilled in his life, and he lived the perfect life that we should have lived. He died the death that we deserve to die so that he could save us from our sin, and his power is mighty to save anyone who will turn and trust in him. So yes, amen. that's why we come he- here on the radio. That's why we go out to the streets. And I'll be at Monterey Fisherman's Wharf Saturday from 1.30 to 4.30. Again, come out and talk with me. I'd love to help you take that next step in your relationship with Jesus, whether amen. it's your first step of faith coming to him or you've struggled, you've gone away, and you want to come back to him. I'd love to pray with you and give you any scripture, give you a free Bible. It's also the time to stop by and pick up a free copy of the New Testament, the the Good News version, which makes it much easier to read and understand the New Testament. And if you haven't read the Bible, the New Testament is probably where you should start yeah. off. <laughs> be, I, yeah, easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier and a lot. Yeah, it, it's probably the best way to start off. Dwell on Truth is kindly sponsored by Top Grade Paving. And from Santa Cruz, said on Yelp, Robert and his crew did a great job on our private road. What I loved about working with Robert was his attention to communication and follow through. We have a private road with a lot of different parties involved, and he was patient and dealt with the ups and downs of trying to keep all parties happy. He kept us informed of how the process would work and then got each area done on time. The main paving on a steep section of our road is perfect, and the separate patching, the two speed bumps they installed, and paving on the three private drives were all done with a minimum of disruption and were completed ahead of schedule. Add this to the quality of work and the fairness of price and you have a winning combination. If you need paving, Robert and crew will get the job done right. Schedule now before he gets too busy as the word spreads. More information is at topgradepaving.com or call Robert at 408-455-8723. That's 408-455-8723. And thank you, Robert, for sponsoring Dwell on Truth. Did you forget how you were saved? Did you forget that it's only by grace? Did you forget that he gave you his son to be the only way? He is the only one. He didn't die in vain He was thinking of you when he hung in your place He didn't die in vain Just believe it and receive it in thanks Man, I don't know when to talk over it. It's a shame. I don't even want to talk over that song. What a beautiful great song. song. Beautiful. That's ahead. Take No Glory for the record. Uh, mm-hmm. They sent me a bunch of CDs in Latvia, which couldn't have been cheap, totally free, and said, feel free to use our music for your ministry. Wow. And Good what's job. the name of the group again? Take No Glory, Musicianaries. Take. And I think that's all the time we have. I want to recommend people check out Dan's website because we haven't really plugged yes, that at yes, all. Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, okay. YourSoulMatters.org. Yes, because it does. We are a part of an organization called Open Air Campaigners, which is all around the world, but you can check out our local branch at OACNorCal.org mm-hmm. and our international branch at OACUSA.org. All right. Um, that just about wraps it up, Brenton and Daniel. Again, you guys, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for it's having been, us. It's been Always great having fun. you on board. Pleasure. Always fun. It's good seeing you again, Daniel. Yeah, I haven't seen you. You look good, dude. Time. You look thank fantastic, you. man. Yeah. You look younger than you did before. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, and I'm not sure I believe you, but thank you for the kind <laughs> comments. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, you guys, thank you for listening. This is Flight 1080 KSEO Santa Cruz, and we'll see you tomorrow.